like a runaway virus. Fire and destruction was everywhere, including this stretch of Vermont Avenue near Watts. Harry Ingram crossed the avenue to click off shots of a burning trophy store. He wasn't worried about being hit by a car as there was little traffic except for fire and police vehicles. Plastic trophies melted on shelves in the display window. He focused on one in particular, the figure of a man on an orb triumphantly holding a bowling ball aloft. Over several clicks of his camera, the figure withered away in streams of plastic, yet still the bowling ball remained untouched, until it too succumbed to the flames. Ingram felt neither excited nor fearful, remaining stationary as rioters and police tore around him. If he had any sense, he reflected dimly, he should be awash in both emotions. Most of the other news people out here covering the events were white men from the white press. The Times and the Herald Examiner didn't have any Negro reporters. Now maybe one of these fellows might well get a brick upside their head from a participant, but were less likely to be jacked up by the law. Ingram realized either side might turn on him. There was another colored freelancer somewhere out here, he knew, dashing about for Jet Magazine. Maybe when they both got a beat down from the cops, they could compare notes in jail. Yet here he was, wearing a linen coat and a snap-brim hat like he was on his way to the fifth race at Hollywood Park. He carried a recent model cannon in his hand and his battered Korean War-era speed graphic around his neck, the latter more for good luck than practicality. Unlike the cannon, which used film rolls, the graphic had to be loaded one 4 by 5 film plate at a time though like the old-timers before him, he could deftly remove one plate to load in another rapidly. To top it off, it was Friday the 13th. He almost chuckled. Get the fuck out of here! A cop yelled at him from his Plymouth Fury prowler as he roared past. This ain't a goddamn tourist outing! Ingram resisted yelling back that he wasn't sightseeing, but moved along, though he wasn't leaving the area. A man and a woman rushed past, taking turns pushing a shopping cart filled with recently acquired goods, including a toaster oven. As one of them pushed, the other held on to the cart to prevent it from tipping over. The thing was filled to overflow, 